this video, we will talk about U.S. customary units of liquid volume. You will need to know how to estimate and measure liquid volume, and you will know, need to know how to identify equivalent measures uh, between units. Liquid volume just means the amount of space occupied by a liquid, or the amount of space that a liquid takes up. There are four um, units of U.S. customary volume that we need to make sure that we know. First of all, a cup is the size uh, that you get your milk in at lunch. This is what it looks like in our set that we have in our classroom. The pint if, is a little bit bigger than this, about double the, si or double the size of it. And if you've ever gotten ice cream before um, and had been a Jerry's container at the um, grocery store, that is a pint. Here's what ours looks like, and you can see that compared to the, the one cup. So this one's a one cup, and this one is a pint. A quart is the size that a Gatorade bottle that you get from the store. It's also the size of a Nalgene bottle, um, up to this line here. And our quart in the classroom looks like this. So you can see that it is double the size of the pint. This one's the pint, and the quart is the bigger one. And finally, the gallon is the size that you get your milk in from the grocery store. And here is what our gallon looks like compared to the quart. When you are trying to decide which measurement, which unit to use when you're measuring volume, you need to think about picking the biggest unit that you can without overflowing the container that you're measuring. So for example, if I wanted to figure out the capacity of this container here, I'd start with my biggest measurement that I know, which is the gallon, and ask myself if I could pour this gallon of water or milk in here, would it overflow it? Well, we know that it would because, for example, this container is much bigger than this container. So we want to go down to the next one and we think about the quart container. If I poured a quart of liquid in here, would it overflow? Well, probably not. So that means that a quart is the best unit to measure this one. Um, when you think about something small, say for example this glass here, you'd want to pick the smallest measurement that you have, which is the cup. And if you were thinking about something big like a pool or a bathtub, then of course you want to use your biggest one that you have, which is a gallon. We have to know how to estimate and measure liquid volume. Um, when you're estimating, you want to compare your volume to benchmarks that you know. So, for example, if I'm trying to estimate exactly what I think the volume of this uh, container might be, I'd first think about the Gatorade container. And I know that the Gatorade container, the volume of it is less than the volume of this one. And then I think about the milk jug, and I know that the milk jug, the volume of that is bigger than this container. So that tells me that the volume of this container is somewhere between a quart and a gallon. So you may say two quarts would be a good place to start for an estimate. When you are ready to actually measure an item, you need to pay careful attention to the markings and the lines on the uh, container that you're using. If you're using a set of measuring cups that you see in the kitchen, you want to fill these all the way to the top of the measuring cup. To, in order, this, so this one that I'm holding is the fourth of a cup. You want to make sure that you fill it all the way to the top to get an exact measurement. But in the classroom, or in other times in the kitchen, you have to be careful um, to look at the lines. This one, for example, is a two cup measuring cup, but if you measure to the top of this one, it would be a lot more than two cups. So you have to read carefully and see that the two cup line is right here, and you want to fill it to this line in order to get two cups. The other thing that you need to know is that to get an, an accurate reading, you need to set it on a flat surface at the table, um, and then you need to get eye level in order to read it head on like this to get an accurate reading. You don't want to be way above it or way below it. You want to look at the, the water line or the liquid line straight on with it in order to measure accurately. There are two models that should already look familiar to you um, in order to help us remember how the different units of capacity or volume are related. Um, you've seen before the big G, and I have a song that I um, have learned in order to remember where things go. And so it's a repeating song. It goes like this. Draw a gallon, draw a gallon, add four quarts, add four quarts, 
Two pints in each quart. Two pints in each quart. Two cups a pint. Two cups a pint. So I actually do, when I'm thinking about these problems in real life, I actually do think about that song, draw this in my head, and then use this to solve problems. Another um, model that a lot of people like is the gallon man, and you can see that the uh, big blue is representing the gallon. He has um, four quarts for arms and legs. He has two pints for each quart, and then he has two cups attached to each pint. So the way that you would read this is that you would see that gallon man, made out of gallon, is equal to four quarts because he has four green arms and legs. And then you would read this to see that one quart is equal to two pints. And also, four cups is equal to one quart. There's another model that you may not have seen before that's new to you that um, I think that you would like it sort of related to fractions. If we think about this big square as being a gallon, we can then think about dividing it into four pieces so that each one of these pieces is the size of a quart. So a quart is one-fourth of a gallon, and you see that represented here. Then if I divide each one of those quarts in half, so now I've broken that cord into two pieces, and that cord into two pieces, and that cord into two pieces, and that one. Now we have eight pints in one gallon, or two pints in one quart. And you can see that the pint is represented by the rectangle of this size. And in order to show the cups, then you split each pint in half, which makes a lot of sense when you look back at our um, containers here. I'm taking the pint and splitting it in half in order to get the cup. So I'm going to divide each pint in half, like this. And then if we know that this is the size of a cup, it's very easy to see that there are 16 cups in one gallon. So we're going to use our three models in order to solve some problems of equivalent measures, equivalent measurements. In this problem, you are knowing, thinking that you're starting with two quarts, so two containers of this size, and you're trying to figure out how many cups would be in two of these. So if you're going to use the big G, you want to zero in on just two quarts. So I even like to circle it when I'm using that and just look at those two quarts right there. And then I'm going to count the cups that I see inside those two quarts. So there's two, four, six, eight cups show up inside two quarts. You can use gallon man very similarly. If you have six pints and want to know how many quarts six pints is equal to, you can zero in on those six pints. There's two, four, six pints. Those two pints are equal to a quart. These two are equal to a quart. And these two are equal to a quart. So you have then looked at three quarts so six pints is the same as three quarts. Finally, if you want to figure out how many 18 cups, how many pints that is, and you're using the square model, um, I had to draw two squares because I first started out with 16 cups, and that was one full gallon, and then I went into the next gallon and covered, colored in two in order to make 16 plus two was 18 cups. So then I've got to look and see how many pints are there, and I've got to think about the pint being two cups. So there's a pint, there's a pint, there's a pint, there's another one, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I colored in all the cups that I had and then circled the pieces that were pints. Four, eight, nine. There are nine pints in 18 cups. So I hope that you will choose whichever model that you think is best in order to um, visualize how to um, Go back and forth or find equivalent measures in liquid volume.